Hey guys, my name is Chris and welcome back to the Modern Diver channel. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Aqua Eye made by Vodasafe. This is a handheld sonar device and is designed to detect human bodies underwater. Basically, this would be used by public safety divers, support divers, or lifeguards on site to look for a potential drowning victim, lost diver, or aid in body recovery. This device uses sonar and AI to determine the size, density, and roughness of an object to determine if it is potentially a human body, and it will then aid the search party in being able to go to a specific area and look for that body. This can drastically reduce the search time needed for this type of recovery because it can allow you to scan up to one acre underwater in less than two minutes, which is extremely fast compared to traditional search patterns. So in this video, we're going to be taking a look at the device itself. We're going to talk about what comes in the box. And I'm also going to give my impressions after using this in a simulated Lost Diver scenario. So without hesitation, let's dive right into it. First off, I want to say thank you to Vodasafe for giving me the opportunity to create this video. If you guys are following on Instagram and TikTok, you might remember last year we had a brief opportunity to test dive this in the water. However, after that video, Vodasafe actually reached out and sent me a demo unit for an entire week to test, including giving me some online training. So I am now able to go more in detail for you guys about how this product works and give you guys my honest impressions of it. I also want to mention that if you are watching this video and part of some sort of public safety department, Vodasafe does have these demo units regularly available, so make sure you guys reach out to them if you are interested in testing one of them yourself. Vodasafe is actually a Canadian company based in Vancouver, British Columbia, and as far as I know, they're the only company creating this type of product, which is why the Aqua Eye is used by public safety departments all around the world. So to start off this video, first we're going to dive into the product and see how it comes in the box and talk about what's included with it. Every Aqua Eye comes in its own custom military grade Nanook 920 hard case. These cases on their own are waterproof, dustproof, and shockproof. They have a pressure release valve on the front and two very easy to use latches, meaning that this case can take a beating even in a working environment and it can also be easy to access even while wearing thick exposure protection on your hands. The Aqua Eye unit itself is brightly colored and factory sealed. It has a large backlit LCD screen on the front, a large push button just below that, and a pistol grip and trigger, meaning that it is very easy to use while wearing thick exposure protection. The device itself weighs about 3 pounds or 1.4 kilograms, and it is positively buoyant, meaning that it does float if you were to let it go in the water. There is a built-in internal battery that charges via this wireless charging pad that does come in the box. This is powered by a simple barrel charger. This is obviously the North American unit, but I believe they do have different versions of this depending where you are in the world. I've been told that the Aqua Eye on a full charge can scan continuously for up to 8 hours, and in storage the battery should maintain a full charge for approximately 3 months. This is all that's included in the box because this is all that's needed to operate the Aqua Eye, meaning that this device really is not going to take up a lot of space inside of a lifeguard station or an emergency response vehicle. So now let's take a closer look at how to actually use the Aqua Eye. First off, to turn it on, you just need to simply press the main button on front where you will then see the screen boot up and you are presented with the main user interface. In the top right corner, you can see the battery level indicator and in the top left corner, you can see the angle indicator. This in real time will show you at what angle you are holding the device so you can keep your scans consistent. We're gonna talk more about this in a moment. Below this you have the main scanner display which is this semi-spherical grid which shows your scan progression, rough distance to target, and you can also cycle through the different modes such as short, medium, and long range if you want to increase your scan's resolution. There's also a secondary screen that shows your raw sonar data via a color-coded heat map to help you make educated decisions if you're getting a lot of feedback on your scan. As mentioned, the Aqua Eye uses sonar to scan underwater environments. Before I get too much into detail about how to complete a scan, I want to give just a quick refresher on how sonar works. As a reminder, you have both a transmitter and a receiver. This is the Aqua Eye unit itself. The Aqua Eye will then use water to send sound waves, often referred to as pings, through the water column, which will then bounce off an object and then return back to the Aqua Eye. 
The Aqua Eye will then use its internal AI algorithm to interpret this data and using two simple shapes will indicate whether or not it believes it has found a potential target. A hollow circle is a large object that it is not sure of and an X indicates something that it believes is potentially a human body. It is important to note that underwater environments can be quite complex and there is always a potential for false positives, especially if there are man-made objects such as pilings. You can see in this image here, it has actually marked this first piling as a potential human. Now, this is where the heat map comes in. If you were scanning in an area that had a lot of man-made objects, you might be better off using the heat map because this will show you the raw data that you can then interpret to make an educated decision of where to look. To scan an underwater environment, the operator needs to be stationary and hold the device a couple inches underwater. The device is designed to scan from left to right, and while you are holding the trigger, you will then see the black bar at the top of the grid start to fill out. These are your ping indicators, and you want to make sure that this black bar is as solid as possible. It is important to note that depending on what distance the potential target is from the operator, one of these gaps will cover a much larger area. If you are scanning at the long range, 50 meters, one of these gaps will completely miss a body. However, if you are scanning at the short range at 10 meters, then one of these gaps is only going to cover potentially a third of a body. Once you have scanned an area and let go of the trigger, you then have a live cursor which indicates what direction you are looking at on your scan so you can direct the search party accordingly. It's also important to note that the sonar cone is only about 5 to 6 meters tall or 16 to 20 feet, meaning that if you are scanning an area that is let's say 40 feet deep, you will actually need to scan the top of the water column and then using that angle indicator, you will need to point the device down to then scan the lower part of the water column. So now that we've talked about how to use the Aqua Eye, it is time to put it to use. I was able to grab a couple volunteers and we went out and did a simulated lost diver scenario to see if we could use the Aqua Eye to help recover our friend. During our test, the water temperature was only about 36 Fahrenheit or about 2 to 3 Celsius and it rained on us the entire time, but I actually think this was a good real world test because we had reduced visibility and I was able to use the Aqua Eye while wearing exposure protection. We then instructed our volunteer lost diver to get lost and go find a random spot on the bottom so we could see if we could use the aqua eye to recover their body. Now it is important to note that Vodasafe did mention that if you are looking for a diver in a dry suit with thick insulation there is a chance that it might just ping the diver as an object compared to a body because the sonar is getting confused by the air gap around their body. However in this scan we were able to get one target which it did mark as a potential body and it turns out that that was our diver. After the scan you can see me here using the live cursor to determine what direction the target was in and indicating to the dive team that he was approximately 25 meters out. At this point our divers then surface swam themselves above our potential target to get ready to descend and recover the body. Here you can see the divers starting their descent. Again this is just a simulated lost diver scenario so our diver was on the bottom fully responsive and breathing and we were able to see the stream of bubbles meaning that we were in the right area. Our divers then took this opportunity to practice bringing an unresponsive diver to the surface, which you can see here. In this situation, first you want to make contact with the diver to confirm that they are actually unresponsive, and then you want to position yourself behind them to start to control the ascent. When surfacing an unresponsive diver, it's important that the rescuer maintains control of their own buoyancy as well as the buoyancy of the victim, while also keeping the airway open of the victim to help avoid an air embolism. Once in position, the rescuer then needs to maintain control of the situation while also monitoring to maintain a proper ascent speed. Once at the surface, the rescuer will then establish buoyancy for both them and the victim. Well guys, there we go. Overall, I had a really great time test diving the Aqua Eye. My only real complaint about the device is I did find in certain situations the screen was a little too glossy, so if the sun was directly behind you, then there was a bit of a glare and it could be a bit hard to see the screen. You might have noticed this in some of the clips that I took while trying to film this review, but overall, in person, I really didn't have that hard of a time seeing the screen, and it is backlit, so especially in low light situations, the screen will be even easier to read, and I really don't think this is a major problem. Um, overall though I think it's a great device I think it's designed with a specific purpose in mind and it can potentially save lives it helps keep public safety divers safe and it can also help bring closure to families after a tragic disaster so I think it's a really cool product and it's awesome to see that it's a Canadian company leading this innovation so again a big thank you to Vodasafe for giving me the opportunity to create this video I will have their contact info in the description down below so if you're interested in reaching out to them feel free 
Uh, if you guys liked this video, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button, and we'll see you guys in the next video.